From the Ear to There Travel Studio, this is the Ear to There Disney Podcast. The Ear to There Podcast, it's time to start the show. Be sure to hold on tight, here we go. Exploring all the different Disney destinations. Ear to There, it's time to start the fun. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ear to There Podcast. Disney Podcast. I am your host, Phil Gramlich. I am also the owner and the founder of Ear to There Travel, which is, of course, a Disney specialized travel agency. It is my job, along with all of the vacationeers on the Ear to There Travel team, to take away all that stress, all that anxiety, and all that time that it takes for you to plan a Disney trip. Because listen, it takes a heck of a lot of time to plan a Disney trip. And we want you to focus on the really, really fun things like having a phenomenal time with your family and friends and enjoying the magic. And we help get rid of all that stress, all that anxiety, so you can have a blast. We do all of that at absolutely no extra cost to you. So we will get you the best possible package price or room-only reservation price. We will get you those discounts and keep looking for new discounts once your trip is already booked. We will handle dining reservations, fast passes, special event tickets like Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party or Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Transportation, golf tea times, you name it, we do it all at no extra cost. So you can listen to this podcast, you can meet every vacationer, and that is our word for travel agents, or you could... Request your free, no obligation quote over at eartothertravel.com. All right, this is episode number 194 for the week of March 2nd, 2020. And it's time, grab a drink, grab a snack, and as a famous mouse once said, on with the show. the last 30 years or so, ABC and even an NBC show here and there have had Walt Disney World or Disneyland episodes. These are episodes where the characters of your favorite shows like Full House or Boy Meets World or Game of Thrones go to Walt Disney World. Now I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding about the Game of Thrones thing. The Dothraki in the Magic Kingdom would not be a good, (laughs) would not be a good fit. But these shows have gone to Walt Disney World and ridden the most, the newest attractions, the most popular attractions, stayed at the new hotels, all kinds of stuff. So this week, and this is a show that it's inspired by a listener. This week, we wanted to revisit all of those shows that went to Walt Disney World and Disneyland in the 80s and 90s. Actually, I think it's all 90s. There might be a couple, and there's some 2000s thrown in there. And this show was inspired by a message from my buddy Griffin in Virginia. So Griffin, thank you so much for coming up with this idea and sending it to me. And I hope you like this episode. I'm going to go now to a little musical intro with my guest. Enjoy. (laughs) That's not a great music to intro you to. All right. (laughs) <laughs> here to talk with me about his favorite TV shows. I, th- I thought of the 80s and the 90s, probably mostly 90s, that went to Walt Disney World. Is the man, the myth, the legend. You haven't heard from him in a while. It is Chuck. Don't call me Carlos Rodriguez. Chuck, how the <laughs> heck are you? I'm very good. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. It has been a while. It's been too long, man. I've been saying it to Amy. I'm like... People are really tired of hearing you and not hearing Chuck. So I'm glad that you're back on. And dude, can you find a show more in your wheelhouse than TV shows going to Walt Disney World? Seriously. Yes. And in fact, especially because like you, you were so limited as to what your first, <laughs> your, first your, your intention for this uh, topic was. Immediately when you said it, my mind expanded to like 30 other shows we could talk about besides that's, the ones you were thinking of. That's awesome because <laughs> I am very, you know me, I'm very limited. My brain is very small. Very, very limited. Very simple. Very simple. <laughs> See, Chuck, that's what the new, 
Oh, wait. Darn, I hit the wrong button. I didn't have the... I was going to give you one of these. But I didn't, have, oh. I didn't do it in time. I got to get faster with the sound effects. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, I am very limited and very simple. So, of course, let's... You know what? I want you to start because you, you mentioned one. Uh, and you called it the best special that ever went to Walt Disney World. Yes. So yes. you you started us with that one because I, I, I agree with you. And it's just one of the first... I mean, it's pretty early on as far as Disney specials go, as far as TV specials. So anyway, which one were you talking about? Uh, when the Muppets went to Walt Disney World. Right. So it's called, it's and actually I, called the Muppets at Walt Disney World. Yes. And I, so I, I, what, what I was thinking was, I mean, there are so many Disney theme park specials, especially the anniversary specials that go back to all the way to the 60s. But this one was technically a TV show, The Muppet Show, that went to Walt Disney World. So that's why I did it. So I remember seeing this the, when I was – I, I guess I was 12 when this came out. Uh, I had yet to go to Walt Disney World. So this was like this huge like intro to, to the parks for me. What's weird about this one, and I don't know if you recognize this, there were three parks around when it opened. Uh, Hollywood Studios had only been, what, less than a year opened. When this, yes. when this came out, but all, they make it look like all three are one big park. Do you remember that? <laughs> they, they definitely don't to say that the, that the Muppets had to take buses or monorails. <laughs> they did it. They did not yeah. even, even they when they went to the laundry mat, uh, textile services building, they didn't, they made it sound like it was all right behind each other. Yeah. Oh, a little misleading, a little there's, misleading. <laughs> there's a song love in a laundromat that is done. Yes, there was. <laughs> I remember when my, my first job, uh, once I was, you know, full time at Walt Disney World and living there uh, with the Disney Institute programs, we used to give tours of textile services, and there was an what an autographed picture tour. of Gonzo and Camilla. That's funny. That had to yeah. be just a fascinating tour. <laughs> it was. It really was. Actually, no, it is. It is actually kind of cool. All right. So the Muppets are visiting Kermit's family. This is per Wikipedia, by the way. I did watch clips of all the shows we're going to talk about on YouTube. Uh, Last week when we planned on recording this, and then I had to cancel again on you. So I, I haven't watched it since last week, but the Muppets are visiting Kermit's family for their annual reunion when they meet up with Kermit's aunts and uncles. When the others learn that the swamp is right next to Walt Disney World, they sneak in and are pursued by a security guard named Quentin Fitzwaller, played by... Chuck. I always forget his name. <laughs> <laughs> also very famous from Eyes... What's he in? He's uh, it's it's Charles Grodin, but he's in a yes. movie. He's like famously angry in everything he does. Like yes, every, like everything I saw when I was a kid with him, he was just always angry about something. So he's chasing him around the parks. Like I said, it's all one big giant park. There's no Skyliner. There's no monorail. There's no uh, none of that. But um, do you remember? Because I haven't seen this in, probably since I was a kid. Uh, what attractions they hit? Do you remember how it ends, how the show ends? Any idea? Yeah, I saw it a few years ago. It was on YouTube. Now it's only clips I know. or a really bad yeah. version. I but I remember catching it a few years ago for some reason or the other. Um, I uh, They do go on um, – well, Big Thunder Mountain, when Miss Piggy goes on with um, – is it, is it, it's not Sweetums. The name of the janitor at the Muppet Show. I always it's, forget his uh, name. Oh, uh, I always forget his name. Oh my god! Now it's going to drive me crazy. Can I remember him? <laughs> look in, it up. Look, look in, it up. Well, in the Muppets, in the Muppets, um, the re, like the revival movie that came out. I don't know, seven or eight years ago or so, with Jason Segel and Amy Adams. They're gone from the theater for like twenty years, and then they open a door and he's in there sweeping. And he, and oh, and Fozzie, that's right. I haven't seen that in a long time. And Fozzie's like, Fozzie says his name, and he's like, Fozzie, so nice to see you again. <laughs> But he's never yeah. left. He's been cleaning the Muppet Theater for 20 years by himself. What is Aww, his name? That's cute. What is his name? I can't remember. All right. So you, all right, Chuck, you keep going while I look up his name. Well, okay. So I remember. Well, first of all, I do want to say, because you, when you introduced, you know, how, how the show uh, starts. So uh, uh, regular listeners to your podcast uh, will definitely understand why. I connected with the um, with what exactly happened at the beginning of the episode because if you remember correctly, Kermit was of course very excited to bring all the Muppets, all his friends, you know, to the swamp to meet his family and to do their annual jamboree or whatever they do. 
But uh, like myself, I would feel like, well, that's a waste of time when you know that you're only two miles away from Walt Disney World. That's more important than seeing family. That's... And I remember having that thought even back then in 1990. <laughs> and even in 1990, so I totally understood you were why the Muppets were like, sorry, Kermit, your family's boring. We're going to Walt Disney World. I, I totally got it. I you totally were a 14 year old kid, I think, if my math is right. I was 15. 15 year old kid. And you already knew that you were a grumpy old curmudgeon. And. There was no way you were hanging out with your own fam with anyone's family that day. You're definitely well, going. not not for nothing. But actually, when when the, uh, when we went uh, in 1985, we we were driving down to Miami to to spend Christmas and New Year's, you know, with the family in Miami, and we stopped at uh, at Walt Disney World just for two days. So it would have been like December 22nd and December 23rd. One day at Magic Kingdom, one day at Epcot. And I remember saying to my family, like on, you know, midday through the 23rd, when they're talking about, oh, well, you know, we have our whole the whole week left and we're going to, you know, go to Miami and we're going to be with your grandparents. And I'm like, I'd rather stay here. <laughs> <laughs> well, who wouldn't though, right? You're a kid. You want to stay Well, here. yes. I mean, you know. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, but anyway. All right. So we got to, so, all right. So they ride. Here's what they do. They do Big Thunder Mountain. You were right. Uh, Indiana Jones, Epic Stunt Spectacular, where uh, I believe... Who's in the show? Let me look it up. Um, Miss Piggy fights the bad guys in Indiana Jones' epic stunt spectacular. Then there's Star Tours, the Mad Tea Party, World Showcase, the Walt Disney World monorail. The Utilidors are actually making an appearance. Uh, and the show ends. By the way, did you know Raven Simone was in this? She's like a little girl. Yes, I remember, yeah. yeah. So she would have been like. It was not NBC, so it made sense of time because she was on the Cosby yeah, show starting that season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, the story ends with the Muppets having a friendly meeting at Mickey Mouse's office where Mickey and Kermit compare their company theme songs, When You Wish Upon a Star, and The Rainbow Connection. And The Rainbow Connection is actually sung by Raven Simone. So what an ending. Because after, <laughs> after that, the Muppets return to the swamp and find out Miss Piggy was remaining in, stuck in front of the movie ride, the great movie ride, with her feet still stuck in the cement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They return to Walt Disney World afterwards as Cameron tells Emmy Lou, who who the heck is Emmy Lou? What what Muppet is that? I don't know who that is. I, to go hey, get it, the it's pick. Gotta, it's gotta be one of Kermit's uh, relatives, probably. Uh that makes sense. To go get the pickaxes. So that is uh that that is the the uh gist of the Muppets and Walt Disney World. What's the Muppets at Walt Disney World? Big okay, uh here's a little trivia, last part. Uh Jim Henson appeared on the Arsenio Hall show with Kermit the Frog to uh, promote the show. It was Jim Henson's last live TV appearance. How about that, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, You don't get that kind of inside information anywhere but <laughs> this podcast. It's true. All right, so... No, only from something called Google. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, not all podcasters are Googling and finding all this information. No, not all. Not all do. Only the professional ones. Yeah, some other ones that just say the shows that go and that's it and they talk about their... Listen, we're going deep dives here. So did you know... All right, so what was the first sitcom? Do you know? The first sitcom, uh, it was not on ABC that went to Walt Disney World. Are you sure? Well, Disney World, Disneyland, because I always thought oh, it was Disneyland. Blossom. But You're right. That's Disneyland. exactly. Darn, Chuck, you got me. You're right. <laughs> it's Disneyland. You mean, so right. you mean when the when the episode is actually filmed at at the, one of the parks? Yes. No, no. Yes. But no, you were right. The first the first one was uh, Blossom was Blossom, and uh, Nick Blossom's dad gets a job at Disneyland as an Elvis impersonator. Which is all that I know about the show. I've never seen it. I couldn't find a clip online. Um, no. But I did find out, though, how that much of the magic is lost when Blossom catches her boyfriend, Vinny, hugging another woman. That's bad news. She was, he, was, he was giving another girl the huggies. Remember from Muppets <laughs> like Manhattan? Chuck, we just watched Muppets <laughs> Take Manhattan last night. Well, I, we, we just talked about it, so it made me think of it. No, I watched uh, it with the, kid. we watched yes, it with the kids not, last night. I was not a Blossom fan, so I do not remember seeing that episode. You know, um, you know there um, there were a lot of Blossom fans. I, my sister, who you know very well, was the biggest Blossom fan ever in 1993. She used to. You remember when the show would come on and she would do the dances with all the silly hats? Amanda, my sister. I hope she listens to this episode. (laughs) Actually, I hope she doesn't. She would run and get hats every like Monday when the show would be on. 
and do dances and put the, take the hats off and try to mimic exactly what Blossom was doing on the show. And Andrew. <laughs> do you think if, if Amanda has a daughter, you think she's going to call it six? <laughs> you know, what's funny is a couple of, uh, of D23 Expos ago, I met six. She was, Oh, nice. She was there doing like, you know, autographs and appearances. And I didn't know, I didn't recognize her. And I, we were standing next to each other looking at a Yoda mural made of uh, M&Ms or no made of jelly bellies. <laughs> and we were just talking about yeah. the, about the mural. And I was like, how cool is that? And she's like, I know. Right. And then later I was walking around and she was there signing autographs and it said six from Blossom. I was like, that's right. <laughs> I knew I knew her <laughs> face. Anyway. So Blossom went 93 also in 1993, maybe the most famous or infamous uh, Disney Walt Disney world episode of all time. The house meets mouse from full house. How much do you remember about the house meets mouse? I did not watch full house past maybe late 89, early 90. Oh, Chuck, we got it. Cause we got it. <laughs> this is an important one to talk about. Do you remember it? No, I didn't. I didn't watch it. Did no I research. didn't. I did not watch it. But by, by the time I was 15, my television viewing became very sophisticated. I didn't watch any of those ABC Friday night uh, shows. <laughs> what the heck? I, I don't. Uh. All right, so I had a little sister. I stopped sister. watching Family Matters. I stopped watching all of Dude, those how are we going to do this episode? This is what we're talking about. So, <laughs> all right. So, th- this is these are the ones that I came up with. So, you're going to have to listen to me talk an awful lot on the show. Unfortunately. Don't that's, worry. <laughs> that's what it there is. There was one that I actually I found on YouTube, and I did rewatch the whole thing. So Which I'll one? What was it? Family Matters. See, that, that one I've never seen. I've never seen the Family Matters one. Uh, but that is on my list. So, Here's the most unbelievable part in the house of mouse. Michelle gets, she gets, I think she gets, did she get lost? I don't know what happens. She becomes the princess of the day on the full house episode. And she gets to be in the parade of the three o'clock parade. Of course, that would never happen in a million years. She, you know, gets like a, a they, they pick her as, a, as the princess of the day. She gets a crown. She's like on the Aladdin float in the parade I don't know which parade that was back in 93. Uh, you'd be better off, better remembering that than I was. Pre, uh, uh, remember the magic? I don't remember. It wasn't remember the magic. That's like Right, 90, so it was pre, so I don't remember yeah. the one before it. I don't either. Um, but so, but I'm sure it still had that same uh, that same glass Cinderella float that's been used uh, in 20 parades. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, I don't even know why I asked you to be on the show, right? Because you're not bringing a whole lot to the conversation today. So... Michelle, even wait, even Kimmy gets to go on this vacation with them somehow. I don't know she why does. she didn't. She all these to... shows, so the, all the relatives and all the neighbors wind up going. They're, that always happens. I Never think fails. she went to Hawaii with the with the Tanners when they went to Hawaii too. They just she just gets to go. Well, Kimmy was like the, the the funny part of the show. Anyway, yeah. So so Joey and Jesse somehow have a radio show. I don't know how because Joey was a stand up comic and Jesse was. Jesse was a, an exterminator. He made a lateral move from an exterminator to having a live TV, like drive time radio show. I don't know how that's possible. And then he was able to to do that radio show to, to hold it not only in the living seas, but in the darn tank in like the, uh, in like the submarine that they have in there in a little, little, I don't know. It's not a submarine, but it's a little habitat that's under the water. He and Joey get to do their radio show from in there. And that's unbelievable. Okay. So then Michelle's the Michelle is the uh the princess for the day. She gets a tea party with like all like a private tea party with Pinocchio, Dopey, Alice, the White Rabbit, Minnie, and Donald Duck in Toontown and Mickey's Toontown Fair. I guess it would have been back then. Uh what else happens? DJ Steve can't come on the trip, her boyfriend. Uh, so he, DJ thinks she sees Steve everywhere. One of the places she thinks she sees Steve is in the parade as Aladdin. Why does that come on, Chuck? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I need you to, need you to keep, I need you to contribute here. Why is that a big deal? Cause she sees Steve as Aladdin in the parade. Probably because Aladdin had to come out that season, that, uh, that, uh, that month or something. No, the guy who played Steve did the voice for Aladdin in the movie. I did not know that. I did not know that. Oh, my Lord, Chuck. You're supposed to be an expert. <laughs> I'm so, only an exper- expert on the interesting things. Okay. So <laughs> at the end of the episode, Danny uh, proposes to Vicky, his longtime girlfriend, at the fireworks 
in uh, in Magic Kingdom. He actually has fireworks that they shoot in the air that says, Vicky, will you marry me? That never could happen. That's not a real thing. I don't even think drones no. could do that now <laughs> in 2020. But that is the summary. That is, a, I just summed up the entire episode. Oh, and Stephanie is extremely, extremely jealous of Michelle the entire time because she's the princess for the day and Stephanie isn't. So obviously, because she's, she's like Jan, Jan and Marsha. Exactly. Like the same thing. Exactly. Over again. So if you missed it, if you missed that episode, you have to go back and watch it. Now, Chuck, you have to go back and watch it because you um you you brought nothing to the table with Full House. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I, I stopped watching Full House after like the first uh, the first season. All right, nineteen ninety. Where are you in the timeline? I'm going to give you nineteen ninety five and Family Matters. Do you, do you, can you bring it on Family Matters? Nineteen ninety five. Well, yes, because I I forced myself to watch the the Family Matters. Uh, it was a two parter, so both episodes were on YouTube, and I did force myself uh, to to watch it. Um, and yeah, you're right. They 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 aired on uh, in ninety five, like two two weeks in a row. And uh, so did you watch it or do you remember it? I read about it. <laughs> I watched right. a clip. I watched a couple of clips on YouTube, but I I read about the story. I did not uh, watch the entire thing. No, not, not recently. I, I so, definitely watched it in the 90s for sure. Right, because you, you, you actually were watching Family Matters every week. So if you were, yes, of course, when that episode came on. I actually you, did. You I definitely watched Family Matters every week. Full House, Family Matters. 95, I would have been 17 or <laughs> I wasn't getting I wasn't getting invited many places at seventeen. I was already a Disney fan, so if I wasn't if I didn't have a hockey game that Friday night in high school, I was watching Family Matters at Full House. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, so what I wrote down as I watched it, I wrote down a few notes to remember. Um, what I, actually what what I found fascinating, which is definitely a trend in those shows back then. There's two trends that I picked up on personally, and I wonder if you or uh, you know uh, listeners, uh, this makes sense to you. First of all, if um, the show usually did go ahead and uh, highlight uh, whatever was new at the time. Right. So whatever the newest park, the newest attractions, the newest hotel. So like in Family Matters, they – they um, the story was that Urkel was a finalist in an in- inventor's competition. And of course the competition was being held at Innoventions because that would have been almost brand new at the time. So that makes sense. And of course, I stayed at Wilderness Lodge because Wilderness Lodge was new at the time. Oh, I love Wilderness Lodge. The other theory, which we'll go on when we start talking about other shows that, that I have, is that the more money the show made on ABC at the time, the more they got to do what they wanted. So, for example, Roseanne's episodes has a very different feel to, to the episodes from the Friday night uh, ABC shows. Because the Friday night ABC shows – were barely money makers compared to Roseanne, so they were really cheesy. They probably Disney probably told them kind of what they wanted in the episode, but Roseanne did exactly what she wanted on her show. So that's that's my two well, my two theories. So yeah, so wait, family. So Family Matters was ninety five. Roseanne was the following year ninety six. Uh, yes, I'm trying to see. I don't remember the the Roseanne episode. It says the synopsis: fireworks and fanfare accompany the Connors on a whirlwind tour of the Magic Kingdom of Disney World, when Darlene finds she's actually happy in the presence of Winnie the Pooh. That's the entire thing. I do remember, actually, I, I said I didn't see this, but I think I did. There was something about Dan wanting to go to Epcot because they had beer. I yes. remember that was a thing. Like, the reason he went was because, and of course, Magic Kingdom didn't have beer back then, so that's the part, That's not a park he would want to go to. Did Hollywood Studios always have beer? I can't. I can't remember that. Yeah, they, they, did. they did. They did. So Dan wanted to go to uh, to Epcot and go to World Showcase. I don't remember Darlene. Well, Darlene was miserable <laughs> on the show in general, but I don't remember her and her Winnie the Pooh fandom. I don't remember that at all. I, I remember per- perfectly. Okay, I, let's hear I, it. Unlike the, the cheesy Friday night ABC shows, I did watch continue to watch Roseanne through its uh, you know through its entire run, and um, and it was it was it was two two episodes. One episode was just setting up why they were going to Disney World, which actually did have a couple funny things that made me think of you because the, since since you're a travel agent, because on the first on the first episode. Uh, they came into some money. It wasn't the lottery, you know, situation because that was a couple seasons later. But they came into some money, uh, and so they decided to, yeah, to bring pretty much everybody with them to Walt Disney World. Um, and they were booking flights, 
and they were missing uh, like three, three seats or two seats or something. So what Roseanne did was she called the airline and said, yes, uh, I have two reservations. Uh, my name is Smith, and I have the reservations on this flight to Orlando. I'm going to have to cancel that. So they canceled it, and then, of course, she called back and booked those two seats. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Always. back then, I guess that's how you had to do it. You had, you had a call. Obviously, there was no, there was no uh, yeah. website or app to do it. I don't think in 96 you were going online and booking flights. I don't, I don't <laughs> think, anyway. I think – 96 was still very much the AOL days. And yeah, or, of course. I remember, of course. Do you remember Prodigy? I had Prodigy before AOL. No, I don't remember Prodigy. Oh, oh my God. I remember I, I signed up for a ba fantasy baseball team on Prodigy. And you would call and it would do the whole dialing thing. And then it was all like, your screen looked like, uh, it was like green and, and white. It was like two colors. And I had my fantasy baseball team. And I get updated every day. I'm boring the heck out of you. There's no reason to keep talking about this. Um, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I'm talking. I'm talking to the guy who's obsessed with Golden Girls about my fantasy <laughs> baseball team. It's not going to go over well. Um, all right. So, so, so wait. So this wasn't. I I was confused. I thought this was the one when the reason it went to Walt Disney World, Roseanne and crew, was because the lottery. They won the lottery, but no, the, they didn't go to when once they won the lottery. They went to fancy places. They didn't go to. They didn't go to Disney World. <laughs> 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 During that year, they went to all over the world and stuff. But um, no, they just went because actually by that time, Dan had been working for the city of Lanford and then they, they laid them off and they gave him like a huge, uh, a huge, uh, what do you call that? When you get laid off and you get like a set, not severance, a settlement, but severance package. That's it. Yeah. Severance. So they decided to use the severance uh, on this trip and bring every single person on the show with them. And uh, so the first episode, which aired on February 20th of 96, was just them planning for it. And then, um, and then the second episode was them actually there, and it was called Disney World War II. And the, the, the one quote that I love so much, so they're in a hotel. It's not a Disney hotel. It, they don't really mention you know, what hotel it is, but it's obviously not a Disney hotel. And, um, and they're about to go out. And somebody figures out that the, the curtains in the hotel room opens the remote control. So they're like all excited by that. And then Jackie, somebody says like, wow, and this is all man-made. And Jackie says, uh, this all, I was reading about this. It's all used to be orange groves. But that's not what one Walt Disney saw. He saw that lake. He saw that castle. He saw that ample parking lot with convenience shuttle service. <laughs> I always like that quote. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're, they're still cheering in the background. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, Jack. All right, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, and then there's a and then there's a second quote from which I've used many times over the years. When they get to the Magic Kingdom and there's rope drop, but the rope drop is like a town square, so they have to film them, you know, actually running all the way down Main Street, which does not happen now because rope drop is always at the hub. But um, but uh, before rope drops, Jackie says like. Um, so I want to live here. No, I want to be worthy of living here. <laughs> I've used that quote many times over the years. Obviously, <laughs> so far that we the, the the list that we've done, you were the biggest fan of Roseanne. I mean, it's not even close. Uh, and the Muppets. So far, we have your two favorites are Roseanne and the Muppets. <laughs> I'm assuming maybe you didn't watch the Step by Step or the Boy Meets World episodes in Walt Disney World. I did not. By the time I was in the '90s, I stopped watching any show that's around that really was around children. I really was more for the <laughs> no, sophisticated adult humor. By no, then, <laughs> no family, no children, nothing. All right, sitcoms well, back then who had children were were pretty boring. They were they were pretty pretty boring. Actually, so you're right. I so realized now looking listen, back. Listen, so step by step, I'll I'll, I'll give you the rundown. This is going to be very. And you were exactly right. So they step by step, the grandmother gives them their, their inheritance early. So the whole family and friends get to go to Walt Disney World and they go and stay at Old Key West. And this is 96. Of so is that, I guess that's right. new in 96. Uh, so they get to stay there. They never mentioned that it's Old Key West, uh, but you can, you can see clearly that it is from the exterior shots, the shots of the lobby. And then the kid, uh, JT, do you know the weird, like, you know how the DVC rooms are, how they have, the ma the master bedroom the one bedroom they have the master bedroom and they have that weird window that opens up to the bathtub in the bathroom. I do remember that. It's yes. weird, right? Like I don't know why that's the thing, but and they make they actually make fun of it on step by step because JT tries to climb 
climbs through the window into the bathtub. That's like a fun thing. Uh, so let me try to think. The step by step, there were four. Blah, blah. Uh, there were four plots for the step by step show. Uh, one of them I remember. So, dude, they go everywhere. They, like I'm looking at the pictures right now from step by step, and I don't know how many people remember the show step by step. Uh, they they ride the resort. There lunch. was no, no reason to remember it. <laughs> oh, people like the show. <laughs> Although I did have Patrick Duffy and Suzanne Summers, yes. you know, after they had left their much more famous and, and more money making shows. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So there's uh the the girls, the three daughters from Step by Step, playing a band that gets to play at Pleasure Island. Of course they do. Right. So you see you see Pleasure Island in ninety six, you see Magic Kingdom in ninety six. Uh, one of the young girls, Al, gets a crush on a guy from uh, on a on a skipper from the Jungle Cruise. Uh, they and there's a kid. Let me see. I can see if I can find his name. Jake. I don't think he's a. I don't think he's a uh, a son. I think he's like one of the friends. He wants to ride every single ride in Walt Disney World in one day. That's his like his whole his whole shtick. Um, that's the whole. That's one of the main things of the show. So for some reason, at the towards the end of the show, he gets to play, to play Indiana Jones in Epic Stunt Spectacular. I don't know how he pulls that off. I don't know who Jake knows <laughs> that he gets to do that. <laughs> the crazy thing was that uh, Steve played Indiana Jones on Full House like the year before. Oh, so, that's interesting. Yeah, so it's kind of I mean step by step. Not only was it kind of like a a ripoff of Full House or Family Matters. It also just completely lifted the same exact plot <laughs> from those shows. But you'll be happy to know at the end of the episode, Jake does manage to ride every attraction in Walt Disney World in one day. And there's a presentation in front of Cinderella Castle where Mickey Mouse congratulates him. Just so you know. Yes, and of course, because he was able to do that before Fast Pass and before there was actually no uh, low seasons anymore. So, I mean, yes, he was able to do that back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> 96, that's two years before my college program. I remember my college program being able to bang out a ton of attractions. Yes, of in the course. Day. There were plenty of days and weeks and months when you could just go and do anything you want with a 10-minute wait. Yeah, I remember going in Mar- like March of 96 and uh, or 98 and – Go in the studios and literally, I'm not even kidding. My family, like, you know how to do the pre shows or you're in the shows. So, with Superstar Television, you could be on like Cheers or I Love Lucy. You could be right. on, you know, you could be a volunteer in the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular show. You could be a volunteer in that, that water scene in a backlot tour. We, somebody in my family got to volunteer at almost everything in one day. Right. I was, right. I was in the water tank show with my cousin. We were the my cousin Nick. We were the two like people that that got to like play the stunt show before you go back to the catastrophe canyon and stuff. My my dad was uh, an extra on Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular, and my aunt sat at the bar in Cheers for uh, the uh, Superstar Television. Like it was crazy. Like we, we all of us got to do something. Like. We all got to be on stage that day. It was awesome. That doesn't happen anymore. It's no. It's so busy, even with the coronavirus taking over the entire world. You still can't get into the parks. <laughs> Forget about Great. it. Um, <laughs> and I did see that post that you put up on social media. I won't say what you said, but it, it was pretty funny. Uh, well, I'm going on Monday. I'll let you know if I feel. Where are you going? What park are you going to? I am going to go to the studios because I'd like to be there to get an, a, a third time of riding Riders of the Resistance and then obviously go on Mickey and Minnie's Railway. But, like, the railway is no big deal because after the first couple hours of the day, the wait time has been, like, an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, it's still – I think Rise of the Resistance is still – that's why they didn't do the uh, the boarding time for Rise of the Resistance. From what I understand, they can only do boarding, boarding times or boarding parties for one attraction in all of Walt Disney World at a time. And they weren't about to stop doing a rise of the resistance because it's, it's insane still every day. Um, yeah. All right. So more shows in the nineties, boy meets world in 1996. Uh, Amy, my wife will be very upset. when she hears that you did not watch the boy meets world episode. I'm never a boy meets world fan. Oh my ever. God. She loves that show. Holy cow. <laughs> it's like her favorite show of all time. So Corey and Topanga, the two main stars of boy meets world, uh, are kind of at 
They end up getting married, by the way, for Girl Meets World later on, uh, 20 years later. Yes, uh, I've heard. So they um, they are kind of at odds in the Boy Meets World episode. Uh, there are really cool uh, uh, scenes in this one. Let me, let me look. I know there's a really cool scene at uh, at the Coral Reef. There's a, a big kiss scene in front of the Living Seas. Uh, what else happens? Let me check. I'm going through it. Uh, why am I still on step by step? Um, oh, there's a. Cro- you mean because all those cheesy shows were exactly the same? No, there's so a. Cro- that's difference. why there's a crossover. <laughs> One of the girls from uh, Step by Step is actually feeding the dolphins in Walt Disney World at uh, the Living Seas with Corey from Boy Meets World. It's crazy. They actually <laughs> they're actually together. Uh, Topanga and her other, like her, like her, not her boyfriend, but some other dude she's there with. Um, anyway, listen, it's, it's, <laughs> I can't, I can't go into the whole plot. I'm sitting there reading about it and trying to do his podcast at the same time. Uh, they go, but then anyway, they, they're in magic kingdom. They go to Epcot. They go to Coral Reef. They go to the living seas. Corey swims with the dolphins. It's a, it's a really good show. At the end, there is a kiss between the panga and Corey in front of the fountain of nations, which unfortunately is no more. That is the entire Women's World episode <laughs> in a nutshell. So I w- I'm really interested in what what el- else you have since I've met- mentioned like 12 things and you mentioned the Muppets. <laughs> well, you mentioned the, 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 the actual shows that uh, that filmed there, yes. But there have been shows that Let's have go. mentioned going I, to I Disney hear World. Them. What? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I thought I was, I, I literally thought I was handing it over to you and you would go. And so I, I grabbed a drink of my soda and you go, what? Oh, <laughs> God. So um, what, name name so the shows. What, all, I want you to take it away for a minute. Yes. Yeah, so do you remember the Cheers episode that aired on December 17th of 1987? The Christmas episode. Um, do you remember what, what happens there with Cliff? I don't. Uh. He's trying to, yeah, is it, he's trying to win a trip to Disney World. Yes, yes, through um, the, with, a, with a canned food drive. Yes. The post office I, yeah, yeah, canned yeah, food yeah. drive, yes. I do remember so, that, yeah. So he does, yeah, he does mention, like, uh, I think one of the quotes I wrote down is he says, imagine Pirates of the Caribbean, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, and me. Yeah. He's, like, really <laughs> excited. And and at one point, like, Fraser asks him, oh, what is the, what is the food drive, you know, for? And Cliff is like, um... Uh, the poor, the needy, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up, he was losing, but then he ended up winning because Woody had brought in one dented can of, of Span and a can of lychee nuts and chow mein noodles or something. And it, But he had forgotten to put it into the food drive bin before the deadline, but technically accounted. So so the, the implication is that he, that, that he did win the trip and he did go. So he wasn't in the rest of the episode. That's awesome. I do remember that. Yep. All right, what else? Uh, well, uh, a Golden Girls episode, the episode called uh, Two Road Together uh, on February 18th of 89. Um, so they, Dorothy and Sophia just went to a, a funeral of one of Sophia's friends. And, of course, it makes Dorothy think that, well, you know, how much time does she have left, really, with, with Sophia? So she tells Sophia that they'll go uh, away, you know, together, anything that Sophia wants to do or go. And Sophia said she wants to go to... Uh, to Disney World and ride Space Mountain. That's, that's all she cared about. That's all she wanted to do. So um, they did go, but once they got to the hotel, and it was obviously not a Disney hotel, um, they, D- Dorothy just wanted to like sit and reminisce like through old pictures and, and, and all that, that kind of stuff. So they, wo- they wasted the entire day doing that, and Sophia was really upset because she really wanted to go to the park. And then the next, and then, um, but then the next morning, uh, they did go to Magic Kingdom, but all you saw, you heard them talking on Space Mountain, but all they showed was, remember like when you're in the queue for Space Mountain and then there's the safety uh, advisory, you know, stuff in the little video and, and it used to show like the same clip of people in the vehicle over and over and over again yeah, back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So it just, they just showed that. They showed the outside of Space Mountain and then they showed that clip while you hear Dorothy and Sophia on the ride. And that's it. But that's, that's all they showed. So they did. So they did. Technically, there. go in the in the storyline. They just didn't. They show. did the storyline. They actually went. Yes, they just didn't tape in in the park itself. Gotcha. 
All right. What else yes. you got? Uh, wow. Let's see. Well, um, for I, more modern times, I have others. Uh, modern Family. Did you watch yeah, the Modern Family episode? That, that's what I was going to bring up next. I loved, loved the Modern Family Disneyland episode. It's so good. It was great. When they talk about, and again, it so goes with my theory that in the '90s there was those several ABC or NBC TV shows that, that Disney just told them what to write and what to do because they were just cheesy uh, shows that only a few people right. watched every every week. <laughs> but the big hits, they get to do exactly the script that they want. It does not matter. It doesn't matter if they make fun of Disney. It doesn't matter if they put in there something inappropriate. It doesn't matter. They get to do exactly what they want. So yes, I did love the Modern Family episode uh, a lot, actually. The uh, there's a few things I re- I really loved about that episode. The one. I love that uh, Phil thought he was getting too old to ride roller coasters. He was riding <laughs> with uh, with Luke. And at the end, what, he has an ear infection? Or he's got something, the flu. Yeah, it turned out he's, it was just a yeah inner ear uh, yeah, infection, equilibrium he's, thing. He's got the flu, so he's super excited that he's not just an old man. It's just that he actually has a flu and he's getting sick while he's riding. Uh, I love, it's Haley and her boyfriend. I forget the dude. The boyfriend's name. Oh yeah, they're married now, and they had they had twins. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen the show in in, in a while, but uh, oh, what the heck final is his, season? What is his name? Dylan, and yeah, he is a dapper Dan at one point. Another point, <laughs> yeah. he's in the little John uh, costume from Robin Hood. Uh, and he's, yeah, he starts talking to 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 Haley. He's like, "Hey, it's me, Taylor. Or it's it's Dylan." Um, and when's the last time you ever saw little John out in the parks? Have you have you seen him? I've never <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him. I I remember him so I was out at Disneyland for their fifty I think it was their fifty no, I'm sorry, sixty first birthday. And on Di- in Disneyland when they do the big for the birthday every year, they bring out all the characters on Main Street and then the train station. Uh and they do like this whole they do like a song and right. and they bring so I I did see him then. Uh, it's the only time I've ever seen him anywhere in the park or anywhere. Did you see the list? And this is off the off the uh, topic for a second, but did you see the list for the Midnight Magic DVC event? All the characters that'll be there that are going to be out. It was amazing. No. Oh, it's it's amazing. It's like ca- characters from Hunchback. There's char- you know there's you know um, Phoebus and Esmeralda, and there's uh, some of the rare Ducktail characters. And um, gosh, I forget. There's a ton of them. Like characters from Chicken Little, like who, but like Abby Mallard from Chicken Little, it's a big deal, right? You get to I just find Abby it Mallard. interesting that they have the costumes, even though they might not use them for years or decades. I mean that the co- that the characters are in the utility rooms all that time, yeah. and they never come out. Yeah. Not costumes, of course. There's only one Mickey Mouse. There's only one Abby Mallard. I just don't know what she does the rest. I don't know what she does the rest of her time in the utility rooms. <laughs> just hanging out down there. You know, five years at a time, and then she gets to come out for a show. Uh, wait, Living so off the royalties from the movie <laughs> release, I guess. From, from Chicken Little? I don't think, I don't know. I think those royalties were used no, up the first not, couple of months. That, that didn't make much. <laughs> so, in, in Modern Family, all Jay wants to do the entire show is see great moments with Mr. Lincoln, remember? He remembers yes. how he took his kids uh, to see great moments with Mr. Lincoln when they were kids. So that's he. Eventually, he finally gets to do it, which is cool because I'm a big nerd and I love like great moments. With Mr. Lincoln has kind of a cool, like not a history to this podcast, but a little bit because I've had Bob on so often. And uh, finally, we had I'm going to talk to Bob on Monday, which would be great because I leave for Disneyland on Tuesday, so it won't be hectic at all. <laughs> but I get to talk to Bob <laughs> on Monday again. Uh, my favorite part of the show, two, two favorite parts of this episode. One was when. Uh, uh, I think it's Mitchell tells Cam. No, Cam tells Mitchell that they're going to go to Downton Disney. Yes. <laughs> and and Mitchell, I, like, oh. I hate the fact that Disney, that Downtown Disney was called Disney Springs, so that I I can't use that line now mm-hmm. with everyone every time I go. Instead of calling it Downtown Disney, he calls it Downton Disney. Yeah. He's like, you've been watching too much Downton Abbey. That and uh, <laughs> I love the little girl, and I forget her name. Is it Lily? The little, Lily. Yeah. Yeah, Lily. So she wears the wrong shoes. Um, no, to, no, that's, that's, that's. Oh, uh, Gloria. Gloria wears Gloria. the wrong shoes. But yes. uh, Lily keeps running away. And they have her on a leash and all. Um, which you know, Oh, yes, yes. So at the end, Jay buys her high heels, princess heels. And he's like, she's not going right, to run away but now. Buys, but buys slippers for Gloria. Because right. the opposite problem with Gloria. Right. Yes. Right. It's a great, it was a really that's good brilliant. show. 
Dude, they even break out the 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 four seater bicycle with the Dapper Dance. I've never seen that. <laughs> I've only seen that in like in videos from like the fifties and sixties. I've never seen the four seater like tandem bike in Disneyland at all. I've seen the Dapper Dance a hundred times there. I've never seen it. I'm leaving in a speaking few days. Of, I, want, of, I want to see Speaking it. of that. Do you, do you have the Goldbergs uh, on your uh, list? I don't. No, I didn't. I didn't see that I one. I didn't either. But the did, I didn't I watched, I've watched every episode of the Golden Girls uh, on the Goldbergs since it's come out. Uh, I love the show. And but because it takes place in the '80s, when they did their Disneyland episode, they they really redid stuff so that it looked like Disneyland in the '80s. Oh, it wow. looked like there was no California Adventure. It looked like they were in the parking lot and then walked right up and everything. Oh man, yeah, they went all bummed out. that I haven't seen yeah. this one. I got to see it. I haven't. I love the Goldbergs. I was super late on the Goldbergs wagon, uh, which is really weird because it's based. Yeah, because it's right about on. you. I know. It's about my life. Like, it really is. It like, is literally, they, in every episode, they mention all the things that have been in your life, all the places you've ever gone to, the mall, everything that you know about your life, it's there. I know. Except that you're not Jewish. That's the only difference. I know, but Amy <laughs> is. <laughs> it's so, true. So I get some points for being married to a Jewish person, don't I? I think I get <laughs> yes. some points there. Uh, no, I've I've seen. So here's what happened: we bought the first season uh, a few years ago, Amy and I, and started to watch it. And <laughs> we would let Alexa watch some of it because she was little and she didn't know. And she so the darn uh, uh, what is the the movie, the horror movie from the '80s that the kid goes to see in the first season? Uh, Poltergeist, Poltergeist. So he goes to okay. see the grandfather. Let him let him go see Poltergeist and. There's like scenes from like the he's like a like a ventriloquist dummy in his room, and they're scary. And yeah, Alexa yeah. was like four, and she saw that, and that was it for the Goldbergs in our house. Now, whenever <laughs> whenever we mention watching that show, they're like, "No, no, it's scary." So we haven't seen it, but I have to watch it. I, do you know is it on Netflix or anything? Can I get it? No, it no, it's not because it's still on, right? It's still being, it's still a yeah, uh, it's still on, yeah. Great funny show, and awesome they even show. have a spinoff now with with, uh, with the school in the nineties, which I don't I don't like. I haven't watched it, but they do have a spinoff now. Well, I probably like that one because I was much more of a kid in the nineties than you were. You were like you were an old man by then. You were already in your forties. <laughs> you I've 80s. always been ahead of my time. You have. I have. So wait, so what else? What, what <laughs> other ones? I know George, the George Lopez show went in the in the. I never I never watched one episode of the George Lopez show, so I cannot. Uh, I don't know anything about it. The middle I know went and blackish went. Honestly, I haven't seen, I've watched no sitcoms except for modern family since my kids have been born. So I haven't seen any of those. George Lopez, the middle blackish, any, anything on those? Have you seen them? I, um, I've watched all three shows. Middle is the only show that I watched, uh, every, you know, I've watched every episode of the middle. Uh, so I did catch their Disney world episodes and actually, um, so a few weeks before the episode aired, they were filming, and at the time I was working at the airport, and and I don't know if you know the Orlando International Airport, you know, because it is two sides and everything. When you're on the first floor where the car rental agencies are, behind it is a road, um, and it's used um, – besides, you know, used for people who work at the airport, it's used by people picking up, like, important people, like VIPs. So one day I was just at work, and I was walking back and forth, you know, through that area between the A side and the B side of the airport – and I did see the cast getting into uh, an SUV uh, with Disney guest relations people. The middle? So was the middle people? The what? Was that the middle you said? Yes, the middle. Oh, that's yes, cool. yes. I've seen a few yes. episodes of that show. Very funny. My favorite character is Sue. I think she's, she's hilarious. Oh, yeah. She's the best character. She's the best character on the show. She should have had her own. Uh, she should have had a spinoff. But, but then she got I too old. I don't know. She wasn't a kid anymore. She wasn't a kid when she was playing a kid. She was like in her 20s when no, she was I playing know. a teenager. She could have like a... They could do a spinoff of her when she's uh, when she's oh, like now. I, I would love that. I yeah. would think they would be, like it's like the nine hundred two one zero kids who were like forty five playing high school kids. Gabrielle Carteris, <laughs> yes. when she just did the reunion, she's like sixty years old. <laughs> like, it's like, what are you doing? It's crazy. All right, and, do- um, the funny thing about the middle, the plot line is that they they won a trip, but they won the trip to Disneyland, not Disney World. But oh, they drove right. to I Disney remember. World and just showed right. up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which That's is hilarious. i mean if you watch the show it's you know they, they just have the worst luck uh so it it really made sense actually yeah that's pretty that, uh, that that happened to them yeah that's really funny man that's a that's a that's really really funny all right so anything else you want to mention i 
I left off like all the other, like the, the Disney made shows, like the Wonderful World of Disney. I mean, that stuff is all right. No, that, that wouldn't count because it wasn't a, a real show going to Disney World. Right. Do you have anything else to add, or you you pretty much all said? The only one that I put for uh, is uh, there's going to be very few people who watch, I mean, who listen to this podcast who know this, but um, P- the, the PBS station in Miami in the late 70s had a show called Que Pasa USA. It was a sitcom. It was a great sitcom, and it was about a Cuban family living in Miami. But the point of the show, because it was on PBS, was that they always spoke in English and Spanish back and forth so it could teach Spanish people in Miami to learn English and it could teach English people in Miami to to learn a little bit of Spanish. So the, there was actually an episode in the final season that aired on in 1980 where the grandparents uh, went to Disney World. So you only heard about them talk about it while the rest of the family stayed home and had their own, you know, their own issues. But then the grandparents came came back and they were having souvenirs and they were singing in English, uh, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse. But they said it exactly like my grandmother says it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yes, that was my only that's my honorable mention. But there's going to be very few people who know the show Que Pasa USA. You know what's really cool is you just somebody who's listening to this just heard that and was like, oh, my God, I remember that show. Well, there's got to be somebody. somebody, especially people who grew up in Miami. But it yes. was it was shown on PBS in other cities in the country, too, but probably only cities. That had a large uh, Hispanic population. Well, I can't imagine that they would have shown it. PBS is all across the country. If you've seen Kibasa yeah. USA, let Chuck know. Right in. Chuck's, <laughs> Chuck's phone number. I have seen every episode of Kibasa USA that's ever been on. They're all on YouTube. I'm going to give you your phone many, number. Many Chuck's phone number is – no, I'm kidding. Not really. <laughs> what is – you're a – I'm not even going to try to guess. 561 area code? Uh, no, 386 code? actually. 86. Um, I have how do we, we don't know anybody's phone numbers anymore. Nobody knows anybody's phone numbers. Just in the phone. Like if I ever lost my phone, I'd be, I'd be done. I know. I, the only I know. phone number I remember You're is right. Amy's. It's the only one. And the only reason I know it is because it's one digit off from mine. Literally the only reason. Um, oh, well. Then. So yeah, that's, that's, we got them the same day in Florida, like 20 years ago. Uh, not 20, but it's like at least 15, 14 <laughs> years ago. Anyway. Um, all right. So do you have to close out the show? Do you have a favorite? I know that you pretty much my entire, <laughs> the entire show that I prepared for, you were not prepared for. So do you, <laughs> do you have a favorite episode of these shows, a favorite special uh, from the 80s, 90s, 2000s that either went to or featured Walt Disney World? So you mean out of the ones we've just discussed? Yeah, sure. What's your favorite? Yes. I, honestly, in, with with all things considered, it, it would be the Roseanne episode, probably because I I am such a huge fan yeah, of Roseanne. So I and it was perfect for you know how what the show is like. So I think it was just uh, it was very well done. That's very cool. My mine, I'm I'm going with Modern Family. I I they did such a good job. I think yeah. you're right. It it wasn't. You're right about the other about the the '90s shows. They did they did have very generic humor. The plot lines were all silly about trying to ride the most rides or being a princess for a day or, you know, it was all the same stuff. So to have Modern Family go and do a legit Modern Family, like, they had the same sense of humor as Modern Family. They didn't have to change the show. They made Disneyland fit around Modern Family. That made it. Exactly. That's really great. I do. I do honestly think Roseanne, Roseanne was the first one. And it makes sense to me because Roseanne was such a humongous moneymaker for ABC that she she did exactly what she wanted. So if ABC had told her at the time, oh, please put this in your episode, she'd be like, um, no. Yeah, they probably wouldn't have done it. it. Yeah, they probably never would have done it. So just a little so, little known yeah. fact about the George Lopez. This is I just read this as I was skimming through my notes. I forgot to mention it. They, they spend the second half of the show, and it was only a half-hour show. They spend the, half, the second half of the show in Disneyland, but the first half of the episode, they have hidden Mickey's Hidden throughout the sets of the show, so oh, I think that was kind cute. of fun. Yeah, yeah. So that's fun. Anyway, man. Well, Chuck, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for recording. I I do miss doing doing Girl. these podcasts, but you got to do them more often for sure. I know. I travel for work now, so it is hard to coordinate. But we can try again. I know you're you're you've been everywhere the last the last <laughs> few months. It's awesome. So yeah, right, yeah Chuck, I've you're been the best. Traveling a lot. Yeah, you're the best. Thank you again, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay.
And that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Ear to Dare Disney Podcast. Thank you to my guest, the one, the only, Chuck Ryder. You guys, it's always awesome to have Chuck on the show. And like I said, when we were closing it out, I miss Chuck, so I hope he gets to do more shows really, really soon. And thank you so much, you're awesome, for listening. I really, 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 really appreciate it. Listen, there's a billion Disney podcasts out there, literally a billion. So, well, maybe not literally a billion, but there's a lot. And I know you could be listening to anything right now on your walk with your dog, on your commute, on the treadmill. Thank you so much for listening to this one. I I mean, I really appreciate it. You were awesome. Just remember, there will be a new episode of the Ear to There Disney podcast next week. And also look out for a new Walt Disney World Word of the Week as well. So until next time, have yourself an amazing week. You will catch me live a bunch from Disneyland next week. I'll be out there from March 10th through March 13th, 2020. Look for me on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, as I will be doing as much as I can live from the parks. So I hope to see you and hear you and talk to you then. Have yourself an amazing week if I didn't say it already. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Here to the earth.